Ziggity, what was that, Satchmo? Name your poison. Man, that's blue for sure. That's right. Name your poison blue. Yeah, well, okay. How about some cold card blue, Satchmo? Mr. Nick, I feel too good for cold card blues tonight. That is, if you don't mind. What will it be, boys? Name, Name your poison blue. blue. Boss, you better come inside. Trouble? There's a lady back there hooked for 10,000. Hmm, what's wrong with that? Hello? She's with Colonel McArdle. What's the Colonel promoting now? Still trying to peddle that swamp land he calls Bayou Acres. Still trying, huh? I like that, boys. I'm sorry, Colonel. It's way past our closing time. We have strict orders from Mr. Duquesne. Mr. Duquesne and I know each other intimately. My dear friend, Mrs. Smith, is out $10,000. Is that all? Nick. Mrs. Smith, may I present Nick Duquesne, better known as the Prince of Mason Street. How do you do? It's a great pleasure, Mrs. Smith. How are you, Major? Colonel, sir. You just demoted me. Unintentionally. Mr. Duquesne is the king of Basin Street. Thank you, Colonel. Mrs. Smith has honored us by choosing New Orleans as her permanent home. I extend my personal welcome to you, Mrs. Smith. What unfortunate city mourns its loss. Well, how charming of you, Mr. Duquesne. I come from Baltimore. Nick, Mrs. Smith has just dropped $10,000, and this impetuous youth insists on closing up without giving her an opportunity to recoup. I'd be very glad to carry her account. I have many people from your side of town in my books. Nick. Mrs. Smith happens to own the Rutledge steamship lines. She could buy and sell you. Really? But I have no such ambition, Mr. Duquesne. You wear that cut. I respect a gracious loser, Mrs. Smith. I'll play you one hand for your 10000 win or lose. Well, that's easy when you're dealing. You're a dealing, Colonel. Oh, I trust you, Mr. Duquesne. This is quite a responsibility. Not if you deal them from the top. You're terribly embarrassed. A gambler should never gamble. Gabriel's horn, it's after six o'clock. Six o'clock? The Dixie Bell's due in at eight. Oh, good gracious, I'll hardly have time to change. and there'd be a price on their heads. Good morning, Mr. Duquesne. Good morning, Yvette. Well, this is unlike your mother. I can't believe she's left us to the mercy of strangers. The cornet and that wagon. Did you ever hear anything like it? I'm happy to say, never. Come. Oh, dear, I was afraid we'd be late. Uh, well, there she is. <laughs> Merely. Mother. Oh, I'm sorry. Darling! Oh, oh I missed you. Oh, so. I missed you too. Let me see what you look like. Oh, terrible, I'm sure. I've been so excited about you getting in, I haven't slept a wink all night. May I help you with your bag? My car is waiting. Oh, what a haul. Yeah, not bad. That guy just couldn't seem to get the hang of my cards, huh? Thanks, stranger. Hello, Nick. 
Hello, Biff. Taking a little boat trip for your health? Uh, Memphis got a little dull for me. Really? I hear it got a little hot for you. I'm thinking of taking over the old Crystal House on Basin Street. I wouldn't like that. Yeah, you don't own Basin Street, Nick. That's right, Biff. I just run it. I'm going to see the commissioner. I wrote him a letter. You misspelled it. Two S's in commissioner. That's the way it is, huh? Bon voyage, Biff. Something must have gone wrong. Did you think it's serious, Colonel? No, these modern contrivances. Pardon me, ladies. I've often wondered what's under the hood. Why, Colonel, your nose is shiny. Something wrong? Maybe you could help me get this thing started so I can get the ladies home. Good morning, Mrs. Smith. Good morning. May I drive you home, Mrs. Smith? I'd love to ride in it, Mother. Oh, but I'm sure there isn't room. Oh, don't worry, Mrs. Smith. It has elastic size. Are you sure this won't run? Uh, oh, Mr. Duquesne, this is my daughter. How do you do? How do you do? And her chaperone, Monsieur Leila Carter. Come, dear. How do you do? Oh, forgive me. Isn't it exciting, Mother? This is very generous of you, Mr. Uh, uh, Duquesne, Nick Duquesne. Could I have heard that name before? Merely, uh, is Miss Haskell still teaching counterpoint? Duquesne. The King of Basin Street, Duquesne. At your service. Why, you're, you're not a bit like I imagined you. Mother, where did you meet Mr. Duquesne? Why, I, uh, uh, Colonel McConnell. Uh, thanks to Colonel McConnell, I was in the fortunate position of uh, being able to help your mother. Really? Uh, in a business transaction. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Duquesne, for everything. It was my Thank pleasure. You. And now I know the King of Basin Street. May I visit you? Merrily. Young ladies of quality don't visit Basin Street. Perhaps the Colonel will bring you along on one of his slumming parties. Oh, sounds much too patronizing. Perhaps Mother will bring me along the next time she has a business transaction with you. Come here. Goodbye, Mr. Duquesne. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye, Colonel. Goodbye. Goodbye, Colonel. Mother, the house is charming. It's everything you wrote it was. Do you like it, darling? Mm -hmm. Come on, let's see the rest of it, shall we? Oh, I had such a time getting figured ready for the... Wait, who's that, Mother? That's Endy, your maid, and I've asked her not to sing those songs in this house. Well, she sings like an angel. There's more devil than angel in that music. Do you know what it means to miss New Orleans when that's where you left your heart? Endy, didn't I tell you not to let me catch you at that piano again? I'm sorry, ma'am. If I'd have heard you coming, I wouldn't have let you catch me. Well, Endy, you're incorrigible. This is Miss Merrily. Hello, Wendy. Welcome to New Orleans, Miss Merrily. Oh, thank you. Oh, let me fix you a good hot tub, and it will melt away all your tiredness. Wonderful. <laughs> I'll send you up some nice hot tea, darling. Welcome home. <laughs> Come on, Miss Lydia. Indy. Yes, ma'am? That music you were playing, what was it? I just can't seem to remember not to play it, Miss Merrily. It was a kind of little old blues tune. Blues? Do you play the blues only when you're blue? No, ma'am. They just call it blues. We play it when we're blue or when we're happy, even when we're in love. Right now, I'm in the latter. <sighs> Are you really, Indy? Yes, ma'am. There's no one in the world like my Satchmo. Satchmo? That's short for Satchmo. His real name is Louis, but I like Satchmo best. How does the end of that song go? Miss Merrily, are you trying to put ideas into my head? Please do, uh, but softly. And there's something more. I miss the one I care for. More than I miss New Orleans. Evil Latin Gorilla, 
preziosa e corta e bella, signori e con l'acqua, signori e con l'acqua, graziosa e corta e bella, graziosa e corta e bella, signori e con l'acqua, graziosa e corta e bella, graziosa e corta e bella. You have a very lovely voice, Miss Smith. Oh, thank you, Miss Borsell. Let me be the first to congratulate you, the mother of this exquisite songbird. Oh, thank you, Colonel. My child, this city will forever mark this day. I lay New Orleans at your feet. Moreover, in the days to come... Colonel. Oh, yes, of course. Mr. Borsell. If I may be permitted to speak in behalf of the New Orleans Music Association, I propose to sponsor this young lady's musical debut. How wonderful. Didn't I tell you, Mrs. Smith? And I further propose that we try to secure, as her conductor, our eminent leader, Mr. Henry Ferber. It'll be a pleasure to conduct for such a talented young singer. Oh, thank you, Mr. Ferber. When do you suggest we have the concert? Oh, I shall need time to find a good dressmaker. <laughs> I don't suppose we could wait for the new opera house. No. I think the concert should be given at the beginning of the season, early in November. Now then, it... Merrily. I'm sorry, Mother. Uh, well, we must be going. Again, let me congratulate you. Thank you so much. You don't feel you should wait for the new opera house, Mr. Boissel? My dear, I think that Mr. Ferber will be a great help to you. Oh, I'm sure he will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come, daughter. It's been a very interesting afternoon. I know we'll get along famously now. Well, thank you for everything, Mr. Ferber. Goodbye. Bye. Scales. Titanic? Did I do something wrong? Something extraordinary. You're playing notes between flat and natural. It's like discovering uh, secret scales just made for this type of music. Oh, did you hear what the gentleman said? You are Mr. Ferber, aren't you? I've seen you conduct at the concerts, but I never thought I'd see you conduct ragtime. Frankly, it leaves me a little mixed up. He never gets mixed up when he plays with us. Really? No, sir. I understand you've been here before. Sorry, I've always missed the opportunity of introducing myself. I'm Nick Duquesne. Oh, how do you do? I suppose you think ragtime is all right as long as it's locked up down here. Oh, that's the trouble. You can't lock it up. It leaks through everywhere. It's as though I had caught some virus. Except that a virus makes one ill, and this music doesn't make me ill. It makes me feel very well, but mixed up. I see. So while Dr. Jekyll conducts the classics in the concerts, Mr. Hyde comes down to Basin Street to play ragtime. Is it to get away from something? Maybe it's to come back to something. You're sure you don't feel like going to recital, darling? Very sure, Mother. 
I hope the Beauregard sisters don't feel offended. They'll understand. Have a nice time, dear. Good night. Now, I hope you feel better tomorrow, darling. Good night. Now, Andy, you won't stay out late tonight, will you? No, Mrs. Smith, and thanks for letting me off early. <laughs> You're welcome. Good night, Andy. Andy, never mind putting those things away. Oh, I've got time. I don't even have to rest for being out early. I'm going with you. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am, you can't do that, Miss Merrily. Oh, but I can, and you're going to take me. It ain't fitting for a lady to go to Sturville, except when she's on a slumming party. All right, hand me my slumming clothes. Satchmo, the one with the horn. And there's Mr. Duquesne, the king of Basin Street itself. Why, well, isn't that Mr. Ferber? Yes, ma'am, it is, but it's a secret. What do you mean? Well, Miss Merrill, if I say one more word, it won't be a secret anymore. Tonight. What do you think I'm here for? <laughs> <laughs> Where are the boys? New Orleans! Yeah. New Orleans! Yeah. Do you know what it means to miss New Orleans and miss it each night and day? longer I stay away Miss the moss covered vines The tall sugar pines Where mockingbirds used to sing And I'd like to see The lazy Mississippi A hurry in to spring The Mardi Gras of Creole tunes that fill the air. I dream of oleanders in June, and soon I'm wishing that I was there. Do you know what it means to miss New Orleans when that's where you left your heart? And there's something more I miss the one I care for More than I miss New Orleans Good evening. Well, this is really a surprise. Uh, Miss... Miss Brown, this is Mr. Jackson. Mr. Duquesne's poor memory for names isn't very flattering to either of us, Mr. Ferber. Please sit down. Oh, then you know each other. I've met Miss Smith. Mr. Ferber has been snared into conducting my concert. Oh, I'm looking forward to that with pleasure. Don't you think you should have warned me, Mr. Ferber? This is the last place I'd expect to find you. Mr. Ferber slumming, too. I think I have to be going along now. Oh, please uh, don't go. I, unfortunately, I have an early rehearsal tomorrow morning. Well, whatever faults I may have, carrying pills isn't one of them. Thank you. I think I may say the same thing about myself. Good night. Well, I couldn't have done a worse job of covering up even if I wanted to. How wonderful to have found Mr. Ferber here. Makes my conscience feel so much lighter. Why do you say that? Well, Mother doesn't exactly approve of this type of music. She's determined I'm to sing nothing but the classical. Is that bad? Well, it is for me. Poor darling, if she knew how I'm carried away with this, it would shorten her life. Where's the rest of your party? Uh, are you really a gambler? How did you get down here? Strange profession, gambling. You stand in front of the table and you're respectable. You stand behind the table and you're unrespectable. 
I don't think you're unrespectable. Young lady, you're going home. You still don't belong here. Well, aren't you jumping to conclusions? My maid brought me down here. I'm talking about a chaperone. But there's no point in a chaperone when I have a perfectly charming escort. Folks, come gather around my stand and hear Satchmo's Happy Dixie Band. Now, I know some people call it corn, but right here is where the blues born. Hear that music blue, just the thing that you like to strut to on the floor. Hear the slide trombone and the trumpet moan as you're coming through the door. I'll guarantee that you'll never see like the likes of them again. Mm, stomp your feet to the beat of my Dixie music men. Everybody move, get right in the groove. There ain't nothing you can lose. Now right here's the spot where we'll all get hot with a nasty mess of blues. Here's the place to slap and spank that bass, hear the music. And I mean, this is where the blues is born in New Orleans. Let me introduce Mr. Charlie Beale. Piano man, can he spiel? Only got two hands, but that's a plenty. For when he plays, it sounds like 20. And here's Kid Ori on the horn. Greatest slide man ever born. Plays trombone smears with laughing notes. No human being ever wrote. Everybody knows Zooty Singleton. Can beat them sheepskins like no one. Cymbals, bells, and all that stuff. I'll give out the face and treat them love. be God is clarinet. You ain't never heard nothing like him yet. When he cuts loose, I know you'll roar. Mr. Big God, please give me more. Now here's Bud Scott and his old guitar. Always smoking that big cigar. He's the rhythm man of a great renown. Give a listen while he goes to town. Calendar, meet him face to face. He's the one that plays that old slap bass. He started out with a violin, and the doggone thing just grew up on him. And there's me, excuse my crust, introduce myself, my must. I'm Satchmo Armstrong, don't forget. I got to get up out on the old cornet. man and he's mighty slick he's the boss man of this place and how mr nick please stand up and take a bow why they almost make their instruments talk where does such music come from well it came from miss smith you're going home not until you tell me well it comes from work song cold coast of west africa little Christian churches, riverboats. You want to make up words to it as you go along. Well, they made up the music as they went along. Mr. Duquesne, why don't we hear more of this kind of music? Well, there's a wall around it, Miss Smith. A big, invisible wall you can't climb over. But why? Because it's new? All the wonderful music I've been singing, so traditional now. It was new once, too. Well, it sprang up in so many places, and, and I've been learning to make it mine. This, this music's mine already. Oh, Nick, I, I feel I'm exactly where I want to be and on my way to where I want to go for the first time in my life.
I want to sing that New Orleans song for you. You're going home. But it's a lot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Good Mr. Lateful. Yes, sir. You've had enough music for one night. Well, then you'll have to take for yourself. I have an appointment. Do you mind if I wait for Andy? Mr. Lake will drive you home. Yes, boss. Tommy, I... take Miss Smith home. She'll tell you where she lives. Use the closed car. I understand. Am I being bounced? Deported. Good night, Miss Smith. Good night. They really love the music, don't they? They sure do. Satchmo says that playing ragtime is like talking from the heart. It doesn't lie. Shall we go? Grace. Hello, honey. How many times have you promised not to come here again? I came with some out-of-town friends of father's. You'd better join them. They'll never miss me. They're losing. How about joining me in a drink? No, thanks. Wait a minute, Nick. Do you know who that girl is? Do you? I love it when you're evasive. It's very encouraging. Just like you, Grace, she doesn't belong here. Oh, not like me, Nick. I do belong here with you. I'll take you to your friends. <laughs> Nick, she's beautiful, talented, and very rich. That's why I must make certain that she doesn't come here anymore. I sent her home. I remember, you sent me home once. But I came back. Hello? Well, if daughter knows what's good for her, she'll stay away from Nick Duquesne's place. Good evening, Mr. Blanchard. Good evening, Mr. Duquesne. Well, it's very nice having you here tonight. Thank you. Hello, Nicky, darling. How Good are evening. you? Good evening. Well, how Number 20, the winner. You've won again, madame. Uh, I'll catch these, please. Oh, yes. The cashier's right over there. Thank you. Forgive my, my appearance. That's quite all right. I, I came to reciprocate a courtesy. Won't you please sit down? Do you remember the night you gave me an opportunity to win back my losses? Oh, that was hardly a courtesy. You could have just as easily lost. Well, tonight I played roulette and I did very much better. Good. I won $10,000. I'm glad to hear that you know when to quit. Oh, but I'm not quitting. I'd like to give you a chance to get even. Trying to get even has ruined many a man. I'll come directly to the point, Mr. Duquesne. I'll return this money if you will promise to discourage my daughter's interest in you. Interest in me? When I learned she'd been down here last night, she quite frankly admitted it. Apparently, you were more successful in attracting her than I thought you'd be. Well, that's quite flattering, Mrs. Smith, but I'm sure it's the music here that interests her. One is just as distasteful to me as the other, Mr. Duquesne. I have plans for Merely, and they do not include this kind of music or its environment. I shan't require a receipt, just your promise. I have your promise, haven't I, Mr. Duquesne? Mrs. Smith, I've already told your daughter not to come here. I don't expect to be paid. Oh, why? Well, well, You'll I... find that it buys just as much and sometimes more in the proper environment. Good night, Mrs. Smith. Oh, 
for over a month now, you've deliberately kept me out of here. Dinner here is a series of climaxes. Wonderful food, charming companions, exciting music. Tell me, did you have this specially prepared for us? Yes, against my better judgment. But how did you know we were coming? I told him. But you haven't had a chance. We, we left immediately after I'd convinced you I had a right to come here. I knew that tonight you would convince me, so I telephoned and announced my surrender just before you came to demand it. Men, you're much more complicated than women. What a wonderful street to be king of. But there's an ugly and sordid side of Basin Street, too. From whose point of view? Sometimes even from mine. Get my hat. Yes, sir. You're going to have a look at it right now. Well, let's go. Aren't you coming with us? Mm, as long as you drag me down here, I think I'll stay a while and listen to the music. You might be missing something. I'll see that she gets home. Oh, oh, Mr. Ferber. Yes? Don't forget, I told Mother I was at your studio rehearsing. I wouldn't like to worry her. I'd like that less than anything in this world, or even the next. You're nasty, you're dirty, I'm taking it away. I thought I heard Buddy Bolden say, I mean, I heard Buddy Bolden say. your dinner, Mr. Faber? Enjoy it. I'm getting spoiled for ordinary food, Satchmo. <laughs> oh, Miss Smith left my music. Oh, I'll take it with me. What kind of music's in there? Uptown music. Uptown music. Want to see it? Don't these little flags on the fences get in the way of your feelings sometimes? <laughs> Will you show me how this one goes, Mr. Faber? Why, certainly. Chop it off, boys. We're going to hear some long-haired music. Crip Blues. That's right. That's right. Don't stop, Mr. Ferber. I come down here, too. Why didn't you know? I didn't expect you down here, Grace. Nice of you to pretend, Mr. Ferber, you've known about my coming here. Everybody does, but I don't care. You better sit down here, Grace. Let me get you some coffee. I don't want any coffee. Satchmo. Yes, ma'am. Where's Mr. Duque? He's out, and he won't be back. I'll wait. Merely Smith. Did you bring her here? Yes, Grace, but after tonight, I don't think she'll ever be back here. Stick to your music, Mr. Fur. Satchmo, play me something loud and mean as possible. Look. Oh, 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 oh,
Hello, Billy. Inspection tour? Sort of. hit that kid. Now I'm going to show you the really choice section of town. Nick, take me home now. It wasn't a very pretty picture, was it? Well, why don't you leave? This is home for me. And have you ever tried another place? No, but if I did, I'm sure I'd come back. I could make myself like it there. So don't let that music go to your head. Oh, it isn't only the music, Nick. And it doesn't go to my head. Merrily, do you know why I took you on that little tour? You didn't want me to have any illusions about you. I haven't. Think it over carefully, Merrily. From my point of view, I'm a reckless, unscrupulous man, older than you, experienced. With women, I suppose. If you, a notorious Don Juan, were to snare an innocent little girl, the whole thing would look sordid. Now, wouldn't it? But if a rich young heiress, talented with the world at her feet, throws her life away on some society child. It turned out that she was happy, and they lived like other people, only better. That ought to be sung to music from La Tosca. Colonel McConnell, you're very anxious to build this opera house on your land, aren't you? More than anything in all the world, Mrs. Smith. That's a tribute to the memory of your late husband, of course. Well, this is my proposition. You see that Mr. Nick Duquesne leaves New Orleans, and I'll sponsor your opera house or any other of your commercial whims. Now, I'm not interested in how this is accomplished, just that it's soon and permanent. Mrs. Smith, Mr. Duquesne is practically on the Dixie Bell. This morning's Times Picayune, Constance Vigil's column. Just listen to this. Storyville is under scrutiny again. It is charged that a certain gambling emporium is encouraging the patronage of unchaperoned debutantes. Is the attraction to the ladies the atmosphere of the district or a certain colorful character with a self-imposed royal title? Colonel MacArthur is here now. Send him in. The commissioner will see you. Good morning, Andrew. Colonel. Mr. Krieger, Public Welfare Department. We know one another. Mr. Farbacher. Good morning, Colonel. How do you do, gentlemen? You uh, sent for me? Yes, Colonel. Do I recognize your fine hand in Miss Vigil's column this morning? I might as well be frank, Commissioner. The time has come when something must be done about Storyville. It is no secret that respectable young ladies have been regular habitués of that section. And it is only the interest of our city's reputation that has prevented us from bringing the issue out into the open. So, like you, Andrew, I had no objection to the activities down there, as long as they did not contaminate the youth of our city. Colonel... What would you suggest? I would suggest that the district be condemned, that that element be driven out, so that we may again raise our heads with civic pride. Colonel McArdle, isn't it Nick Duquesne you're after? You're a man of acute perspicacity. Get out. I resent your attitude, Andrew Dow. You, sir, are a servant of the public. And I would suggest you employ some other means by which to fleece Mrs. Smith, Colonel. Politics were never in your line. Nor in yours. This is Basin Street, the center of the district. 38 blocks of corruption, pollution, and degeneracy. Look, Captain. And my old man didn't want me to be a sailor. <laughs>
How's the newspaper business, Miss Vigil? Fine. I'm surprised you recognize me. I'll make it my business to know everyone who comes here. Well, aren't you going to eject me from your... Quagmire of corruption? You have me at a disadvantage. Not at all. A good host always makes his guests feel at home. Excuse me. Honey. You've got to get out of here now. Bring my car around. Yes, sir. Oh, Nicky, you've been reading the newspaper. There's no time to discuss it. You're right. It's boring. Let's talk about you and me. Listen, Grace, that woman who calls herself Constance Vigil is in the casino. She'd give anything to see you here with me. I want it. I want everybody to see Come on. me. I'm not going. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Nicky, let go of me. I want to stay here with you. I can to see you now. Let go of me. I'm not going to go. I'm going to stay here. Nicky, let go of me. I'm not going. Miss Wazell. Beckham, let go of me. Was he trying to prevent your leaving? No, my stand. He's trying to protect my reputation. He doesn't want people to know that I like coming here, that I like him. I want everybody to know it, and I don't care what they think, because I don't like him or you. And you can print that wherever you like. Come on, Grace. Good night, nigga, honey. See you tomorrow. <laughs> You ruffle my feathers, you ruffian. But I like Paper, read all about it. Society girl killed in auto crash. Paper. Mandaloin King question an accident. Society girl killed in auto crash. Read all about it. Vic Duquesne called before grand jury. Extra, extra. Read all about it in the auto. Duquesne cleared an auto Vic death. Vic Duquesne read cleared an auto death. death. Extra, extra. Citizens Committee demands investigation of Basin Street. Get your paper. Naval authorities take action on Basin Street. Basin Street doomed. Get your paper. Forgive my intrusion, Nick. Satchmo told me you were up here. Is there anything I can do? I know this must be a great blow to your pocketbook. I've saved Thanks, some. Henry. Nick, there's something you can do for someone. I'm leaving New Orleans. Does that make it easier? Not exactly. You see, Merrily has made up her mind. She's going with you. After what's happened? She's in love with you, Nick. There's something I'd like you to consider. Merrily has threatened to call off her concert. Now, I don't think that's too important, but she says she'll never sing again. Someday she'll want that career, but then it'll be too late. People have their own destiny, Nick. Sometimes they throw it away too easily. Your two careers don't go together, unless you intend having her support you. Think it over. Wait a minute. I want you to give Merrily a message for me. What is it, Nick? Tell her I'll be at the concert tonight. In spite of what I've just told you? Yes. Friends? Mr. Duquesne wanted us to fill up real good before we started waiting. He's a good man. You know, most of us here were born in old story days. Time makes changes. And the law clamps down. Out go the good jobs and the good times and the music in the nighttime. Now, how about one more tune before we leave? Make a 
some words to Yeah, yeah, come on, yeah. Yeah. Something about goodbye to Storyville. You get the idea, Gail. I'm long, Gail. Shout some words to you. I'm long. You can do it, and then make it look good. That's right, Andy. That's Sing right. it. All you old-time queens from New Orleans who live in Storyville. That's us. You sang the blues. Tried to amuse. Here's how they pay the bill. Yes, hell yeah. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. The law stepped in and called it sin to have a little fun. The police car has made us stop, and story is done. Pick out your steamboat, pick yourself a train, a slow old train. Pick out your steamboat, pick yourself a train, a slow old train. They made you close up, they'll never let you back. Mr. Duquesne? 
I find myself compelled to leave New Orleans. So I hear. The Navy's done a good job. Uh, Chicago's not an easy place to start from scratch. It'll take some capital. That condition is not confined to Chicago. Uh, some time ago, you offered to pay me to discourage Mary Lee's interest in me. That's when you were a threat, Mr. DeCane. Now you are leaving New Orleans. Merrily is leaving with me. How much? 20,000. And you'll leave alone? Alone. Very well, I'll send it to you. I'd rather close the transaction tonight. Now. I'm not in the habit of carrying that amount of money with me, Mr. Duquesne. Oh, I'm sure I'll have no trouble converting this into 20,000. You have very good taste. Goodbye, Mrs. Smith. Darling, you're here. I couldn't get here any sooner. Tonight. Tonight. I'm ready, Nick. I want you to sing one encore. For me. All right, darling. For you. You've all been so kind, I'd like to sing an encore, a love song. It isn't well known, but I'd like especially to sing it tonight because it was born right here in New Orleans. I hope you'll be very happy. Goodbye. Mr. Ferber, the regents of the New Orleans Music Association are awaiting an explanation for this degrading exhibition. You tell them I was merely playing my resignation. Mr. Ferber? Yes? I've been asked to give you these, sir. Thank you, Pat. Nick, 
He's not here, dear. Nick and I are leaving tonight, Mother. Don't try to stop me. Oh, Merrily, dear, you don't understand. He's gone. No, Nick's waiting for me. He left. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Nick! Nick left his note. You sent him away. It would be impossible for anyone to send Nick Duquesne away if he didn't want to go. But he said he was taking me with him just five minutes ago. He Mr. Passed. Duquesne is a businessman. You paid him to go? I didn't have the money. So he settled for my bracelet. No. No. This note says to tell you that for the first time in his life, he is making a refund. If Nick thought he could offer her the right kind of life, he would have taken her with him, but he couldn't. Sometimes I wonder what the right kind of life is. Goodbye. Duquesne's went out. Leave your bill, he'll send you a check. No, it's cash on the line or the stuff goes back. You mean you don't trust Mr. Duquesne? I don't trust none of these fly guys. Don't you call the king no fly guy. Take it easy, Satchmo. Are you Mr. Uh... Duquesne? How much? 108 bucks. <laughs> Seems I left everything in New Orleans, including my credit. Your credit is good with me. That is, if I ever get something for you to use it on. Well, it's a far cry from the Orphan Cabaret. Don't you worry, boss. It won't be long before you're the king of Chicago. Did you figure out who sent you this lucky horseshoe? It might have been. No, it wouldn't be. When is the roulette and dice tables coming for the next room? They should have been here this morning. Hey, who's that guy playing the piano? Oh, that's one of the painters. How's it, Nick? Well, it ain't exactly the Orpheum Gabaret, but it'll do for a start. You know, I'll bet you'll make something out of this burnt-out chop suey diet. Oh, is that where the sucker room's gonna be? What's on your mind, Biff? I'm busy. That's a fine way to treat a friend that spent 50 bucks for a good luck piece. So you the one who sent it. It's awful nice of you, Mr. Lewis. What's your whole card, Biff? No whole card, just a little something to welcome a new tenant. Ever hear the Southside Realty Company? I rented the place from them. Shake hands with Mr. Southside himself. I made the deal with Jim Taggart. Oh, Jim must have forgot to tell you we're partners. But you know me, Nick. I never hold a grudge. When it comes to business, I'm the sweetest guy in the world. Anything I can do, just holler. Now, ain't that nice? Mr. Duquesne, sometime I think you don't believe in the brotherhood of man no more. Man, what kind of piano playing is that? That's your call style. What's the name of that piece? I bet it's something about the blues. That's the honky tonk train blues. We should get friendly. My name's Satchmo. I'm sure you know yours. Mine's me, Lux Lewis. Well, that's 38 and 2. That's 40. All over the world. Pardon me. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I came to check on my equipment. Uh, what was the name? You'll remember, Nick Duquesne. The order was supposed to be delivered this morning. Well, now, what kind of toys was it? Balloons, marbles, monkeys on a stick? Can the stalling. When do I get that gambling equipment? Gambling equipment? I'll have you know this is a Biff Lewis enterprise. We don't handle no unlegal merchandise. Oh, I get it. No tables, no wheels, no layout. Not for Nick Duquesne, right? Anything else you wish? Yeah, but you were a man. Thank <laughs> you. 
Satchmo's horn wafting through the town, so we just followed them notes. <laughs> <laughs> I was calling the children back home, but I guess Andy didn't hear me. She'll probably come with others. There wasn't room on the rods for all of us, Satchmo. Who are these people? Oh, there's heard the music and come on up. Say, mister, what kind of a club is this? You tell me. Is it going to be a restaurant? Just a club. Boy, we'd sure like to join your club if we could dance to that ragtime music. If it isn't too expensive. <laughs> Gee, I never heard music like this. Oh, my God. Hey, hey that's my girl. The trunks are taken care of. Just think, darling. In a minute, we'll be on our way to Europe. Aren't you thrilled? Oh, come on. You will be once we're on the boat. You know, when I went... Mr. Ferber! I'd like to join you. Why, there's no need for you to come with us. They'd forgive you in a minute if they thought you'd go back with them. My heart wouldn't be in it. Are you sure now just which side your heart is on, musically speaking? Very sure. Musically speaking, there's only one side left. Shall we go aboard? Give them what they want, Satchmo. When they drove you men from New Orleans, they turned you into missionaries. Go to it, Satchmo. Convert the Philistines. But what about what we want, those roulette tables? Who ever heard of people dancing on roulette tables? Go on, give them what they want. Most people get only one chance, but you're getting two. But why can't we start again at home? Home is where nobody knows us. Now go here, and good luck. you say? Chess it up, boys! Chess it up!
the lake. Satchel's a lot more boys just come in from New Orleans. They did? They're in a back room. Maybe they knew something about Andy. Oh, Glad to see you, Satch. Jelly Moon. What you know, man? Well, all right. Memphis feet. Hello, Satch. Well, get that monkey suit. <laughs> Reedy Morris. Hello, Satch. <laughs> Have you seen Andy? Last I heard, she's working Sun Plantation in Natchez. Thanks. Hello, Rhythm Joe. <laughs> Monkey, my man. Hey, <laughs> When'd you get up here? This morning. <laughs> we heard about you way down in Memphis. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Decane. Please, your eyes on old Monkey, boy. Hello, Monkey. Hello. How are you, boy? Hello, Hello. Hey. I was beginning to feel like old times. Oh, it's good to see you. Mr. Lay. No. <laughs> I told me you were in the city. I see you done open the gates. All the way. Where are the rest of your boys? After we closed up New Orleans, they scattered all over the land. Some went back to the plantations, the cotton fields, the river boats. They're all over. Kansas City, St. Louis, Memphis, Harlem. But wherever they are, they'll never forget about you, Mr. DeCane. How would you like to work at Colby's Gardens? If it's to play jazz, we'll work any place. Well, wait a minute, Nick. Dick Colby's a competitor. You've got a corner on this dance music. Nobody's got a corner on this music, Tommy. It belongs to everybody. Besides, there are a lot of jazz musicians who would like to eat. But we could open up another no, place. No, Tommy, so you're taking the first train out in the morning, and you're to get every jazz man you can find and bring him here. And please, Mr. Lake, see if you can find my Andy. I'll try, Satchel. I get it. You're going to open up a whole string of places. No, Tommy, we're going to sell jazz. Let's go out, Tommy, yelling for you. Hear that, Satchel? They're calling for jazz. <laughs>
a fascinating film. Queen of Creme, of Creme, no matter where she goes. Oh, indeed, there's no other gal so friendly. Like a bee, you buzz around. Taste the honey found. Take it from one who knows. So bright and pretty looking. She beats a manly cooking. What a perfect blend. And when it comes to loving, it's cooler in the oven. Indy is the end. Duration. And it's out of circulation. Go and climb another tree. You can jump in the sea. And it belongs to me. Oh, Miss Mary Lee. Hello, Satchmo. My congratulations, too. My, you looking just fine. I've been reading about your great successes since you left New Orleans. <laughs> I've read about yours, too, Satchmo. <laughs> Now, ain't that nice? How's Indy? <laughs> We're married, you know. Satchimo, how wonderful. Ain't you gonna inquire about Mr. Nick? Uh, how is he? You ask him with your lips, not your heart. My heart isn't interested. Miss Mary Lee, I seen Mr. Nick just before I left the States. He's singing the blues even when he ain't singing. I mean the blues about you. The bracelet blues? Or cash on the line blues? Mr. Nick gave you up because he felt that a gambling light was too low down for you. He knew you wouldn't listen, so he tried making you hate him. That's why he took those bracelets from your mother. But he took them. He just borrowed them long enough to convince your mother, knowing that she would convince you. Then he returned them to Mr. Ferber. Satchmo, are you trying to say Mr. Ferber just forgot to tell me that Nick returned the bracelets to him? No, he didn't forget. He only wanted to save your singing career for you, like Mr. Nick. Miss Mary Lee, Mr. Nick gave up gambling. He's a very important music man. He's trying very hard to educate New York to jazz. He's got no reason to run out now, no more than you have. You get what I mean? Oh, Satchmo, I... I feel so good, I gotta blow. I again appeal to you, Mr. Cunningham, to reconsider and sponsor Woody Herman and Symphony Hall. Cablegram, Mr. DeKing. Thank you. <laughs> Listen to this. Knocked them call at Royal Theatre London last night. Have a request for command performance. How much do I charge? Satchmo. <laughs> <laughs> Forget that letter, Miss Holbright, and get our friend Cunningham on the phone. Yes, sir. Woody Herman? What respectable artist would appear in my hall if I allowed him to appear here? Must I repeat, Mr. Duquesne, Manhattan Symphony Hall is an institution of musical culture. Well, they seem to like it at the Royal Theatre in London. Why, Mr. Cunningham, the universities all over the country are booking my bands for the coming proms. In fact, we're helping several colleges organize jazz bands of their own. If true, Mr. Duquesne, it is a sad commentary on the youth of our country. Someday you're going to hear Woody Herman. In person, in your own symphony hall. When that day comes, sir, I shall deem it a privilege to tender my resignation. By that time, you'll love it, music lover. I wrote you, I phoned you, I telegraphed you. I just can't take no for an answer. You've got to let me have this Woody Herman for my Versailles club. My patrons are screaming they've heard so much about the guy. Woody Herman, you might as well ask me for the Leaning Tower of Pisa between two slices of rye. Do you realize that he and his band have taken the country by storm? Do you? Oh, sorry, Nick. I didn't mean to barge in. Oh, it's perfectly all right. Come in. 
Okay, you can audition for me now. Excuse me, I promised the lad. Might as well listen in. Look, all I want is Woody Herman. Come on in. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a little nervous, Nick. Oh, it's quite all right, we understand. Uh, make yourself comfortable, Biff. What about Woody Herman? I've already told you. Listen to this fella. Take it easy, son. Uh, take it easy. Can you do this? Oh, Nick! Oh, that's not very difficult. Go on, help him out. You can stop now. Not bad, buddy. Look, you gotta get me this Woody Herman. Work on it, huh? Okay, I'll work on it right away. Gee, thanks, Nick. Come on, buddy. <laughs> How are you, Woody? Great. I can hardly wait to play at that character's place just to see his expression. <laughs> I'm afraid he'll have to wait a long time. Every spot in the country wants you. Every spot? Every spot but that one. Don't worry, fella. You're going to play jazz in Symphony Hall if it's the last thing I ever do. It'll work out some way. I'm sure it will. Are you going to Mary Lee's concert? Concert? Yes, next week at the hall. How do you know? I'm a music lover. I'd like for you to be there, Nick. Oh, I'll be all jammed up. Well, as a favor to uh, me... Woody, I have no secrets with you. I've waited a long time for Mary Lee to come back. But it will never work out until our music can stand where she stands, as equals. I understand, but... Excuse me. Yes? Uh, Mrs. Smith insists on seeing you. What, Mrs. Smith? Mrs. Rutledge Smith. Tell her to come in. I'll use the private exit. We couldn't stay in Europe forever. Homesick? Terribly. Merrily's been a great success. So have you. How much do you want for your business? There isn't gold enough in the world or bracelets enough. There never was. For Merrily's concert, Symphony Hall. I'm afraid I can't make it. There's something I have to accomplish first. Can I help? No, it's, it's something money can't buy. As an ex-gambler, you ought to be honest enough to admit that you were a million to one shot back in New Orleans. A two million to one shot. But you're a great favorite now. We'd be honored if you'd come. Perhaps next time. I think the program would interest you very much. Seat's excellent. Next to mine and only one removed from Mr. Cunningham. Just in case. We didn't shake hands coming in. May we going out?
your daughter has included in this program are on your head, Mrs. Smith, and not on mine. I wish that distinctly understood. Thank you. 